So here I have with me two old CD drives. As you can see, this moves by that rotating. Old scrap of wood and the head of a bedside table. That's all we'll stop. So what I've done here is made a little frame. As you can see, this allows this CD drive to be moved this way. So that's going to control the Z axis and this CD drive to be moved this way, which will control the X axis. So the next step is to connect these little motors with the four pins to the Arduino. Now I'm going to do that with these dew point wires. It's just some cheap wires you can buy off the internet. So I have here with me a fresh Arduino Uno and a CNC shield. Now these attach together like so. Just slot those pins on there and they fit together perfectly. I've also got two little computer chips. One's already in here and the other one I'm going to put onto the z-axis. So this is the x-axis and this one's the z-axis. And these are our little microcontrollers. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to solder some of these wires onto the motors so they can be connected to each of the axes here. Let's get doing that. Then you'll have to continuity test the wires. As you can see, I've put it onto ohms here. And this tells us that these two are connected and these two are connected. It gives you get a reading, but there's no other connections. So these two form a loop and then these two form a loop, which means we can just connect it straight up like that because the left two form a loop and the right two form a loop. So you do the same with the other motor, which will be inserted into here. So here is the setup. I have a variable DC voltage here. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it up to 12 volts. So as you can see, that's showing 12.5. That's completely fine. Um, I've connected that through this little wire and into the voltage of the CNC shield. So after a bit more work on this CNC router, I have made some improvements. So I've put little MDF pads on both the X and the Y axis. On those are going to be stuck. So for the X axis, I've got this little table. It's made out of MDF, but you can make it out of anything really, plywood, card, as long as it's nice and sturdy. So that is just gonna be attached there, like that. And the paper is just gonna sit on top of that. I have this pine, holder for the pen. So that was just made a little block of pine, made a cut into it, kind of forced the pen in through the top, and then I've just screwed it shut. So that's nice and sturdy, pen ain't going nowhere. And um, I've also attached a little screw to the bottom. You'll see why later. So that's just going to go there. And um, so when that moves, it'll do the writing. And I've also got this little bracket for the servo motor. So this is a standard servo motor for the Arduino. This one's just going to go there, like that. And if you just take one of the little tops for the servo motor and stick it on. Now, what this is going to do is, see this little screw? That screw is going to fit nicely there. And the servo motor is going to move this screw up and down. It's a bit hard to show you, but it's not well assembled. So that's going to turn the pen on and off. So the servo motor is going to be wired up to the actual CNC board. And that's going to control when the pen is touching the paper and when it's not. And here is the finished product. So you can see here's the Arduino, the two axes. This is the power regulator. 
So what I've done is I've just stuck this table that you saw before onto the axis, the x-axis. I've stuck the pen onto the y-axis. As you can see here, it's the servo. So the way that works is like that. That just lifts the pen up and down. The servo is connected to the Z plus pin. So if you can see here, you've got the servo connected to five volts, ground and Z plus. So Z plus is the brown wire. So all these, all servos have these three standard colors on them. So the orange wire has to be connected to the Z plus pin. The red wire, which is adapted by the purple wire, has to be connected to ground. And the brown wire is your 5 volt. So that powers the servo and lets it move up and down. And of course, these are the two microcontrollers you saw connected to the X and Y axes. This is obviously the power. Here I've got a voltage regulator. So these two just plug into each other. Surprisingly hard to do with one hand. And from here, I can turn the power on and off and choose a voltage. And these are just paper clips for holding the paper down. So now we have a working, a working plotter. As you can see, it can move left to right, but I'm not going to be moving it by hand. What we need to do is we need to upload some code to it. So what we'll be using is GRBL as a controller for the Arduino. What you need to do is plug this into a computer and let's download and run some programs. In order to get our plotter working, we're gonna need some code, obviously. So the first thing we're going to need is GRBL. You can find that from GitHub. I'll put the links to everything in the description. All you need to do is download this code as a zip file and just save it somewhere. The next thing you're going to need is some program to produce the GRBL code with the servo. So for that we're going to use MIGRBL. Now click on this first link, obviously I'll leave this in the description. The MIGRBL firmware actually didn't work, which is why I asked you to download GRBL or we make your own firmware. What you need is the Inkscape software, so just Download that from the official Inkscape website. Obviously, I already have it downloaded, so um, I won't be showing you that. And download the MIGRBL Inkscape extension. That is just a zip file that you can save. Finally, what you need is something to upload the G code with. For this, I've gone for Laser GRBL. Now, there's lots of programs you can use for this. You don't have to use LaserGRBL. You could use something like Universal G Code Sender, um, but LaserGRBL for me is the kind of most lightweight and versatile program, and it's got lots of nice features. So that would be my winner winner chicken dinner. But obviously, anything that can upload G Code will do. So download and install that. What you're going to need to do next is open up your files and then extract both of these. So extract the GRBL master that you got from GitHub and the Inkscape extension. So the Inkscape extension, you're gonna have to put it into Inkscape. So what you're gonna need to do is copy this file Go into your C drive, into program files, x86, where you should find Inkscape, which you have installed by now. Go into share, extensions, and you need to paste this here. I've already pasted it, so you should see it here. And then what you need to do is you need to go into the Inkscape extension copy all of these files and you'll actually need to paste them into the extensions folder. 
which I've already done. Now if you go back onto the internet, find this Instructable in the description below, and I mentioned we'll have to make our own custom version of GRBL. So, as you can see here are the steps. So we already have GRBL. Clicking this link, we'll need to find a special program to control the spindle, because mostly in GRBL there is a spindle control. We're going to be using that to do our server. So you can find it all in the GitHub repo. Just download that and just save it. Going back into your downloads. So here's the server master. You have to extract that as well because they all come as zip files, of course. Then what you need to do is go into the pen server master into GRBL. And what you're going to want to take is spindlecontrol.c and spindlecontrol.h. Copy that. Go into the GRBL you got from GitHub. And paste it into there. Obviously replacing the files. So that should be enough to control our server mode to through it. Then if you go up into GRBL master, you're going to want to copy this GRBL library. Go into your documents, into Arduino, libraries, and just paste GRBL in. Then you'll find GRBL here. Of course, I already have it pasted in. Open it up. Go into examples, GRBL upload, and just select GRBL upload.eno. This is the point where you can connect your Arduino to your computer. Because what we're going to do is we're going to upload this Arduino program to our Arduino. So making sure everything's fine in tools, Arduino Uno, select the correct port. Take this GRBL upload file, and all you need to do is hit upload. Mine's already uploaded. Now, once you've done that, what you'll need to do is open up Laser GRBL. Because now GRBL is actually on your Arduino. So you can hit connect. It makes an annoying noise. And now what you'll find is if you turn up the voltage on your plotter, then you're connected. And you hit something like this. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I can't really show you. I'll get the camera. But the plotter works. Now, be careful when you do this, because when you first connect, if you go into GRBL configuration, all these, fi all these values are going to be the standard values. So the standard values, as you can see here, my travel resolution, I've turned it down. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to do a bit of messing around with these values, especially 100 and 101. And these maximum rates you can turn well up. And you can turn the accelerations up as well. Maximum travel I've set to 35 millimeters because that is how big my plotter is. You can measure yours. So yeah, this travel resolution, what you'll need to do is you'll need to hit this. What that does is it moves it 10 millimeters in the Y. And then you measure how far it's moved. So if it's moved 20 millimeters actually, then what you need to do is halve that value, halve the step value. So there are many commands you can do with this. X10, Y10. We'll move it to the point 1010. 10. Uh, you can set a spindle speed. So if you do S500, that sets how high your servo will go. And M5, M3 will move your servo up and down to turn the pen on and off. Now, of course, you're not just going to want to do this. You're going to want to make some 
drawings and files with it. So, open up Inkscape. So, this is just a new Inkscape document. First thing you need to do is go File, Document Properties, change to millimeters, and set the size of your plotter. Minus 35 by 35, if you're doing it with CDs, it'll probably be something similar. Let's just zoom into that. Now, there are many things you can do with Inkscape. If you go File, Open, you can open images. Um, if you have an image, select the image, and you need to go Object, Path, Trace, Bitmap. So that will turn it into a set of lines you can use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this text tool and type something like, oh, look at that. This text is clearly too big, and this just works as a standard word editor. It is a bit funny. It's not the best. It's kind of a simple, it's a simple tool, you know. Not many functionalities. So now I have some beautiful text. I can start turning it into G code to make. So I can put it into the machine. So I'll just go ahead and center that. Then I'll select that. I'll go path, object to path. Now I have a path here. Then I go into extensions and click on this MIGLBL Z-axis servo controller, which you should have because you pasted it in. So, as you can see, I've got servo up as M3, servo down as, servo up as M5, servo down as M3. These are swapped to what you should see, um, just because of the way I built mine. Obviously, if the pen is up when it should be down and it's down when it should be up, just go ahead and swap these. The x-axis speeds, those will trial and error. Angle for servo. Now it says angle between 0 and 180. This number isn't actually the angle of the servo. It's an arbitrary number. Obviously, the bigger the number, the more the servo rotates. But be careful. If you put a number like 1,000 in, it might not rotate very far. That's because it's a 360 degree thing. So 800 might be full rotation, so then 900 is like no rotation. So obviously, just um, fiddle around with this. Then all you need to do is hit apply, and it will make your g-code for you. Go into laser GRBL, go file, open file, and find that g-code file you made. Oh, where would you look at that? So as you can see it's flipped, so laser GRBL actually thinks it's drawing this when it's drawing the dotted lines in the background. Now all you need to do is hit play. So. Let's get the non-computer camera out, and let's see what it does. Ignoring the epileptic nature of the screen and the amazing noise from the fan, this is Laser GRBL. Now, if you can see my voltage regulator, I've chosen just over 8 volts. And the actual input voltage is 12 volts. I've chosen 8 because at 8, it tends to, the motor tends to overheat a lot less. But anything lower than 8, it just doesn't rip. If you look at the machine, all I've got here is a small piece of paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check. There's plenty of room to maneuver around the paper clips, which it does. And then I'll just put it back to zero, zero. Now, if you find that your axes are moving in the opposite direction, so you want to swap the direction of movement, all you need to do is swap these four cables around. So just pick them up and turn all four of them around. And without further ado, no, you've all been waiting for. Play. Oh, I bought the last one. And as you can see, it starts drawing. So the server up and down is working. The text is a bit small, obviously, it's trying to do bubble writing, but um, text is way too small. It's a small plotter, you know. 
you see the computer screen, you can see the sleigh head actually moving. It's a really bad video. And we're done. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, you can do anything with this. You can take images from Inkscapes. You can plot anything, really. And you can also use this for bigger projects if you have slightly bigger stepper motors. Of course, the idea behind this project was to do it from CD drives. That's why it's so small. Do be careful, the motors do heat up quite a bit. So make sure to give them plenty break between drawings. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this project and found it useful. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope I'll see you in the next video.